Israel has rise and face Jerusalem. Lions of Zion, blow trumpets. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord, on the Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, today for waking us up today, giving us another chance and opportunity to walk in these law, statutes, and commandments and increase the faith in your Son. We pray today and ask, Father, for forgiveness of all sins that we commit against thee. We pray today, Father, that you continue to build us up, giving us grace and mercy, continue to be patient and long-suffering with us, Father. We pray, Father, that you continue to purge out all sin and leaven from amongst our spirits, Father, that we may continue to be perfect in this truth, Father. We pray today, Father, that you continue to cleanse us every day, Father, with thy word. Continue to take, we pray, Father, that you take not thy Holy Spirit away from us, Father, but create within us a clean heart and a new mind every day, Father. We also pray today, Father, for those that are lowly in spirit, that you lift them up. We thank you, Father, for healing us mentally, physically, and spiritually, Father. We pray that you command our houses and lengthen our days and strengthen our minds, Father. We also pray today, Father, for the destruction of our enemies. We pray today, Father, that you redeem us out of this captivity, Father. And on the day of judgment, you have mercy upon us all, Father. We pray today, Father, that you continue to be that hedge of protection we need in these last and trying days, Father. We thank you for this glorious truth, this glorious gospel, for waking us up and even giving us a chance to walk in these laws, statutes, and commandments and have a fighting chance at the kingdom, Father. Then let the whole body of Christ say hallelujah. 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 In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray and thank thee. Amen. All praises. All right. Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to everybody. All right. Uh, We're going to get right into class. Hope everybody having a good Sabbath, uh, by the way. All right. So today's title of the class is God's Government on Earth and in Heaven. Okay. God's Government on Earth and in Heaven. All right, so we're going to talk about, you know, the Lord setting up everything in order here on earth as it is going to be in heaven. All right, so let's open up with a second address, second address chapter 9 and verse 31. It's the book of second address chapter 9 and verse 31. For behold, I show my law in you. And it shall bring fruit in you, and ye shall be honored in it forever. So the law never perishes away. The Lord said he sowed his law in us, and it shall bring fruit in us. Okay, that's why the Lord says uh, the end all be all is to fear the Lord and keep the commandments. We are here to sow fruit once the law is sown in our spirits. Go ahead. But our fathers, which received the law, kept it not. So that's why you see a lot of our grandfathers and grandmothers and, you know, things of that nature that never got a chance to wake up and keep the law. It says what? Read it again. But our fathers, which received the law, kept it not. They kept it not. Okay, go ahead. And observe not thy ordinances. Uh -huh. And though the fruit of thy law did not perish, neither could it, for it was thine. Right, so the fruit of the law never perishes, right? The law says what it says. It's here forever, okay? Those of us that wake up to this truth, we have a chance at uh, uh, showing those fruits of the Spirit for which the law does within our spirit. Read on. Yet they that received it perished because they kept not the thing that was sown in them. Right. So the Lord says he sows the law in our spirit. But those of us that reject the law says they perish. Remember, Job says nobody perished being innocent. Okay. So the Lord gives us all an opportunity to hear the law and keep the law. Right. You got a chance and an opportunity. 
Let's jump down to verse 36. Verse 36. For we that have received the law perish by sin. By what? By sin. By sin. We perish by sin. Okay, go ahead. And our heart also which received it. Uh Uh-huh. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. Read it again. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not. The law does not perish. Once again, read on. But remaineth in his force. It remains in his force. Okay, so we we always got to, this is what our people don't understand in the Christian church. They think that the law is done away with. I just, I can be saved through faith and grace, and they don't have the understanding that the Bible says that the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. Okay, so we always got to keep these laws. This is what the Lord is going to, it's crazy that Christianity says, well, I'm saved by faith, but what you going to be judged on then? You got to be judged according to something, right? Let's go to uh, second address, 10, and let's read verse 33. It's the book of second address, chapter 10 and verse 33. Uh Uh-huh. And he said unto me, stand up manfully. The Lord says what? Stand up manfully. Stand up manfully. Okay, that's this is what each and every one of us, man and woman, has to do. We got to stand up manfully for these laws, especially these last days. You see a lot of Israel fainting out the truth in these last days because of nonsense, because of small things. The Lord says what again? Stand up manfully. Stand up manfully. And I will advise thee. So the Lord says he only going to advise you if you stand up manfully. That's the only way the Lord is going to deal with you. If you wish-washy, you lukewarm, the Lord says, hey, this is what the Bible says. He only going to advise thee when you stand up manfully for the law. Okay? Now, this, let, let me, let's get an example because he deals with the men first, right? The book said the the Bible says that the Lord His voice is to the Son of Man. So let's get that real quick in Proverbs eight. Yep, verse four. The book of Proverbs chapter eight and verse four. Uh-huh. Unto you, O man. Unto I, you who? O men. O man. Go ahead. I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Right. So His voice is to the sons of man okay there is no such thing as a woman pastor okay there's no such thing as a woman being a leader over men no the bible says read it again unto you O men i call uh-huh. and my voice is to the sons of man his voice to the sons of man the bible says so if the bible said that the his voice to the sons of man right that means the The Lord's army is led by men. Okay? Give me give me a first Timothy three. So this is this is the the qualities that the Lord expects every man in this truth to have. Okay, start at verse one. The book of First Timothy, chapter three and verse one. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Right. So a bishop, another name for a bishop is a leader. Okay? A leader. So if you desire to be a leader, the Lord says you must you must uh, desire a good work to be a leader. Because his voice is to the sons of man. Come on. A bishop then must be blameless. So you got to be blameless in this truth, right? Go ahead. The husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. You can't be a leader desiring to do good works if you got multiple wives. It says one wife. Go ahead. Vigilant. Vigilant meaning you alert. You observe it, right? You ain't just letting things fly past you. You ain't you ain't using no discernment to, to see things spiritually. Okay, you have to be observant. That means vigilant. Go ahead. Sober. Sober-minded. Go ahead. Of good behavior. Good behavior. <laughs> okay, you cannot be uh, a brawler and a, 
you know, a brother that gets into a lot of mischief, you you're in and out of jail. Okay, no, you have to be what it says? Of good behavior. Good behavior, go ahead. Give into hospitality. Now these are good attributes of a leader that we read here. You have to be given to hospitality, meaning what? You always have to have that open door for your brothers and your sisters. Okay? That's what it means, given to hospitality. Okay? Because a lot of people still got that mindset of, uh, you know, I ain't letting no nigga come to my house. <laughs> no, you have to be given. You got, you got to be hospitable. These are the attributes of a leader. Go ahead. Apt to teach. You have to be what? Apt to teach. Right. You have to be apt to teach. Okay? <laughs> you can't be a leader if you can't teach the people. Okay? Watch this. We're going to read. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. Not a drunker. Go ahead. No striker. Can't be throwing hands, right? Because you got a, a anger problem. Go ahead. Not greedy of filthy lucre. Not greedy. You ain't like the uh, Christian church. When it comes to the money, right? Go ahead. But patient. Patient. Okay, now, this attribute right here is one that every brother has to learn, how to be patient. Okay? Because remember, the scripture tells us through patient comes what? Experience. Experience. You're not in a rush. You don't make hasty decisions. Right? You have to be patient with your people even coming in, uh, to the truth from the world, right? You think everybody's supposed to come in and get it just as fast as you. No, that's not how this Bible works. Everybody comes in at a different pace. Everybody comes in at a different learning curve, right? So you have to be patient as a leader. Go ahead. Not a brawler. Uh-huh. Not covetous. Not covetous, right? You see everything, you just got to have it. I got to have that. I got to you covetous, you meaning what? You willing to break God's laws to get what you want. That's what covetous means. Okay? Read on. One that ruleth well his own house. Read it again. One that ruleth well his own house. One that ruleth well his own house. Okay? So this is where it gets serious there here. One that ruleth well his own house. Okay? So... If you're a married brother, you got to have your, your wife and your kids in order. If you are a single brother, how do you deal with yourself and your finances? How does your, you know, how does one's, uh, uh, how does one's house look? Can you keep that in order? Okay, that's what it means when it, you got to rule. Because single brothers be thinking, well, hey, I'm a single brother. I can just, hey, I can throw shit in with I, hey, I I can clean up every three weeks. No, you ain't you ain't you ain't applying this then if you you can't rule your your own house well. Okay, you coming? Hey, brothers coming over there and you got all type of roaches and you know your house smell like old eggs and cheese. You got socks on the stove. <laughs> okay, read that again. One that ruleth well his own house. Uh huh. Having his children in subjection. Having with, his children in subjection. Okay, go ahead. With all gravity. Hey, because the Bible says, hey, now that's one right there that you're going to fight with. Because <laughs> the Bible says, what about these children? They are evil from their youth up. Okay, so this, uh, this is a progress right here. When it comes to these children being in subjection with all gravity. Now, we understand that, okay, my children ain't finna be, you know, my, my daughter ain't finna be walking around the house in pants. Okay, we we definitely gonna make sure them them dresses and them skirts got fringes on them and a the ribbon of blue. Right? So things when it comes to behavior, right? Uh uh the the communication, those are things that's in a, a uphill battle with children. But as far as, you know, the simple things of, you know, we, we ain't finna be cooking and, you know, uh, eating pork. We ain't cooking on the Sabbath. We ain't eating pork, things of that nature. That's easy, all right? But having your children in subjection with all gravity, for those that do have children, we understand <laughs> that's an uphill battle, okay? Read uh, verse 5. Verse 5. 
For if a man know not how to rule his own house. So if you don't know how to rule your own house, your wife, your kids, single brothers, single sisters, just the simple things for y'all, just keeping your house in order, keeping your finances in order, right? Your house is neat, it's clean, right? So it says if you if you can't rule your own house, go ahead, because for any brother that's married, your wife and your kids are your first student. Okay, so if you want to be a teacher of the nation, it says what again? For if a man know not how to rule his own house, Uh how shall he take care of the church of God? Right. How can you then go teach the nation about your house, brother's houses being in order, your wife being uh, submissive, your kids in uh, subjection with all gravity? You first have to have that in order at home. Okay, and. And trust me, that's an uphill battle, too. (laughs) Okay? Now, read on verse 6. Verse 6. Uh-huh. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Right. So you can't be a a beginner talking talking about you want to be a leader. You done came into the truth for three, four years. You know some precepts. No, two, three months, rather. (laughs) And you you, you know some precepts. And now you think you're ready to go on YouTube. Now you think you're ready to hit the streets. Read that again. Not a what? Not a novice. Not a novice. Less being lifted up with the pride. That's what happens with a novice. You give them a few precepts, they think they're ready to go hit the streets. But now they got pride on them. Read on. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. You're going to fall right into the devil's trap. Okay. Watch this though. Read. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. A good report. Go ahead. Lest he fall into reproach and the, and the snare of the devil. You, you know what that means? You are known in the body. You known. You ain't that brother or sister when you come into the truth and it's, and y'all, it's time to congregate. You want to sit in the corner and no. And <laughs> no. You got to be that kind of brother that's, hey, what, what's some precepts? What, hey, what y'all talking about? Hey, yeah, and I was cold. Let me get that precept. Let me get that breakdown. A lot of people come in and sit in the corner and just wait to see who going to come talk to me first. <laughs> Instead of being active yourself, right? That's you being, uh, what it say? You must have a good report of them which are without A good report only comes by what? Interaction. Interaction. So for brothers and sisters that first come into this truth, you got to be hungry to learn, okay? Ain't nobody going to, you know, put a collar on your neck and pull you over, you know, to where the precepts are being brought out. That's something you got to learn and want for yourself, okay? From there, give me a – you got something, officer? Yeah, real quick, real quick. So – the title of the class is, you know, God's government in earth as it is in heaven, right? And with officers, excuse me, with caps going over as far as that uh, good name, right? Give me that Ecclesiastes 3. Ecclesiastes 3. So in the kingdom of heaven, it's not going to be uh, cap what they say, uh, just nobodies. Like, you know, it's, it's going to be the elect, but everybody's going to have a good name. Understand? Everyone's going to be known. And you don't just get that in the gates of heaven. You got to be living that out while you're here on earth. Okay? Read this. No. uh, Let me see. Seven. Ecclesiastes 7. That's what I want. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Let's get this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 1. Going into that good name, right? A good name is better than precious ointment. The Lord says a good name is better than precious ointment. Precious ointment simply comes at a great cost, a high value, it's great quality oil. That's how your name needs to be. Understand? So when people speak your name, they got good stories, they got good examples, they got good history. They got good works behind that name when they speak it. Read it again. 
A good name is better than precious ointment. And because of that, read. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. So when you die, you know what I'm saying, your legacy is going to live on long after you're gone. So the same way when we're here on this earth and we're keeping God's commandments, creating that good name, guess what? In order to get that eternal life, you better have a good name attached to you now, okay? And, and the, the most house government is not just going to be halfway brothers and sisters that was halfway doing the work, halfway zealous, halfway standing manfully. No, you got to get that good name while you're here because that's the requirement, the eligibility of anyone that's going to get into the kingdom of heaven. That's how the Lord's army is going to be structured. Built up men and women that have established and earned that good name on earth to get that being rung upon the hills in the kingdom forever. You understand? Go ahead, Cap. And that's that goes into uh, uh, what we was reading in 1 Timothy 3 about um, you must have a good report. Okay? So you, you have a good report mean what? You got a good name about yourself. When your name is spoken amongst Israel, does it taste like doo-doo? <laughs> or is there good words, right? Good works behind your name. All right, let's get second address 14 and let's start at verse 10. It's the book of Second Edges, chapter 14 and verse 10. Uh-huh. For the world have lost his youth. Uh-huh. And the times began to wax old. The times have begun to wax old. Go ahead, in these last days. Go ahead. For the world is divided into 12 parts. Now the world is divided into 12 parts, meaning think of a clock. All right. The world is divided like a clock is into 12 parts, go ahead. And the 10 parts of it are gone already. Right, the 10 parts of that clock is gone already. So at this point in time, okay, this is 4th century B.C. 4th century B.C., okay? So it says that the world divides into 12 parts, and 10 parts of it are gone already. So it's at 10 o'clock, go ahead. And half of that 10th part. And half of that 10th part. So now it's at 1030. Okay, read on. And there remaineth that which is after the half of that 10th part. So it says there remaineth that which is after the half of that 10th part. And this is 4th century B.C. When, in Edra's time. Okay. So now when, we, uh, when, you, when you pull up the doomsday clock, it says we got, uh, what we got, uh, officer? We got a minute and a half. A minute and a half. That means what? A minute and a half unto doomsday. Or what the Bible calls Armageddon. World War Three. Okay. So you got <laughs> you got a minute and a half, ninety seconds. Now, this is how heavy it is when we read this Bible. Knowing that we got ninety seconds on that doomsday clock, this the first thing Edra said to do. Read. Now therefore. Set thine house in order. Stop. That's the first thing Edra said. Now knowing that we got 90 seconds left on this clock, okay, he says what again? Now therefore, set thine house in order. Set your house in order. The very first thing. He didn't say worry about economics, <laughs> okay? He didn't say, uh, uh, you know, be, be beautiful and glorified. No, he said, get your house in order. The very first thing that we all got to do is Israel. We got to get our households in order. Therefore, the community is in order. Therefore, every city and state can be in order if God's laws were applied. But the Bible, hey, a lot of people don't want to get their households in order. All right? A lot of people got too much, they too busy doing whatever else the world wants them to do. But us as Israel, us being leaders, understanding that the Lord is establishing this government right here on earth, this is the first thing we got to do. Read it again. Now, therefore, set thine house in order uh -huh. and reprove thy people. So you see it's, 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 uh, it's, it's order to this. You get your household in order, 
Then you reprove the people. Okay? One can't get his, if, if your household ain't in order, you can't reprove the people. So it says, get your house in order, step one. Step two, reprove the people. Read on. Comfort such of them as be in trouble. Uh huh. And now renounce corruption. And now you can renounce corruption. Once your household is in order, okay, now you can be a part of God's government here on earth. Read on. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Let go from the, the mortal thoughts of the world. Come on. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh huh. Put off now the weak nature. Put off the weak simp nature. Okay, that's what that means, because you can't be no leader in God's government with weak, simp e emotions and feelings. Okay, your strongest feeling is anger. No, you can't be a part of God's government. Okay, <laughs> God's government, men got to be austere. You got to be sober-minded. You got to be disciplined, right? So the, the, the Bible tells us, as men, we got to put off that weak nature. Sisters, y'all got to have a manly stomach. Okay? Because sisters be very emotional. They be crying about everything. In this truth, you got to have a manly stomach. You got to have thick skin in this truth. The world has taught us to just, hey, when somebody says something about you, hey, take it the worst way possible. <laughs> okay, just, hey, get in your feelings, start crying, go crazy, stab somebody, hurt something, crack, uh, uh, bust windows, right? Put, put sugars in gas tanks. That's what the world has taught us, to react based on how you feel. The Bible says, though, read that verse again, 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Uh huh. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh huh. Put off now the weak nature. That weak nature. Okay, that's your feelings and your emotions. Read. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. That goes into depression. Set aside those thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Brothers be mad because, hey, I'm coming to the truth and my wife don't want to be in the truth or my kids don't want to be in the truth. So now I'm finna be depressed. Now I, I, don't, even, I don't even know if I want to be in the truth no more because my wife and my kids won't come in. To hell with that. <laughs> okay? The Bible says you better seek out your own salvation. If you're worrying about being a part of the 144K, you better shake that weak nature Sisters, they come in too. Hey, husband don't want to come in. Kids don't want to come in. You better shake the weak nature. Don't get depressed because your kids, who you love oh so dearly, <laughs> don't want to don't want to follow mommy. Right? That's how they be. They get mad when them kids. Hey, they, they probably wouldn't give a damn about the husband. Hey, but my kids don't want to follow me. Oh, we got a problem. I'm finna, hey, I'm finna trim my ways to seek love now. Just so you don't have to go through depression because you see your kids don't want to follow you in this truth. So put off the weak nature, okay? Read that again. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Don't get depressed in this truth. Go ahead. And haste thee to flee from these times. Haste to flee from these times, okay? From there. Give me uh. Second address, let's go back to second address 10 and 33. Read that again. It's the book of second address, chapter 10 and verse 33. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Uh -huh. Then said I, speak on, my Lord, in me. Only forsake me not, uh -huh. lest I die frustrate of my hope. Read. For I have seen that I know not, and hear that I do not know. Uh -huh. Or is my sense deceived, mm -hmm. or my soul in a dream? Read on. Now, therefore, I beseech thee that thou wilt show thy servant of this vision. Right. So, the so Edwards is asking the Lord to show him the vision. Right. Jump down to verse forty-four. Verse forty-four. 
This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. Is Zion. So this is the vision that the Lord was showing to Edris. This woman whom thou sawest is Zion. Go ahead. And where and whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as a city built. As a city build it. Watch this. Whereas hold on. Jump to verse fifty. Verse fifty. For now the most high see if that thou art grieved un unfangly. Hey, so this is hey, this is how us and as Israelites have to be in this truth. The Lord said, Now I see that thou art grieved unfangly. How many of y'all be really grieved about seeing your people in the state that they are now, right? This is how we supposed to feel when we see our people homeless, right, begging for change. You see them out there freezing in the cold, no clothes, nothing. This is how we're supposed to feel about our people because we're supposed to be gods on this earth. We're supposed to be ruling this earth. Now, we understand God's judgment, but guess what? The Lord also said that Esau had no mercy upon uh his people okay so read that verse again for for now the most high see for now the most high see if that thou art grieved unfangly unfangly no fake you ain't grieving it is is fake right go ahead and suffereth from thy whole heart for her. You suffereth for your whole heart. Go ahead. So have he so have he showed thee the brightness of her glory. Uh-huh. And the comeliness of her beauty. Read. And therefore I bade thee remain in the field where no house was built. Read on. For I know that the highest will show this unto thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I commanded thee to go into the field. You say, go into the field. Where no foundation of any building was. Right, where any building was, okay? This, hey, <laughs> this is total opposite of what we see today. Hey, he saw them, he got buildings everywhere. Buildings are everywhere, right? He said, go to a, 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 a field where no foundation of any building was. Watch this, read. For in the place wherein the highest beginneth to show his city. He said in the place where the highest begin to show his city, read. There can no man's building be able to stand. He said there can no man's building be able to stand, meaning what? No other government is going to be on earth when the most high in Christ's government is on the earth. Period. He not sharing nothing with Edom. Okay, <laughs> so when we're talking about God's government being here on earth, okay, the Lord says there is no way in hell, okay, that a man's building is going to be able to stand when Christ the king, his government is here on earth. Okay, give me Psalms 82 and 1. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods. He does what? He judges among the gods. We the gods, okay? We are those gods that the Lord judges among. Go ahead. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? You see that? So the Lord says, this is a question from the Lord. He says, how long will ye judge unjustly? And accept the persons of the wicked. Okay? Give me the uh, precept in uh, Ezekiel 7. We're going to read 1 through 8. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, and verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, and in the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Thus said the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. And end is come. Mm -hmm. The end is come. It wait. It watches for thee. You said it watches for thee, Israel. Go ahead. Behold, it is come. Watch this. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwelleth in the land. The time is come. The day of trouble is near, uh -huh. and not the sounding again of the mountains. Read. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee. And accomplish mine anger upon thee. Uh -huh. And I will judge thee according to thy ways. He said what? And I will judge thee according to thy ways. He said, I'm going to judge you according to your ways. Okay, that's why he asked us before. Go ahead. And will recompense thee for all thine abominations. He'll pay you back for all your abominations that you uh, judge unjustly. Okay, go back to uh, Psalms 82. Psalms 82 and 2. Book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 2. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? So Say. this is what the Lord is asking Israel. Because during the time when we were in power, guess what? We judged unjustly. Right? We didn't judge according to the law. Read on. Say la. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Uh -huh. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Uh -huh. They know not. They know not. Go ahead. Neither will they understand. They do not understand. Go ahead. They walk on in darkness. Uh -huh. All the foundations of the earth are off, out of course. There you go. They walk in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Our people don't understand that they walking in darkness. Our people don't understand that everything on this earth is totally out of course. Okay? You got you got everything totally backwards. Everything that's supposed to be upright or good is now looked at as evil. Okay? So the Lord says that they our people walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They don't know it. Read. I have said, ye are gods. The Lord says what? I have said, ye are gods. Uh -huh. And all of you are children of the Most High. You see, so the Lord told us that we gods. We are gods, children of the Most High. Right? But guess what? <laughs> Where there's no order is only what? Wickedness. We are in wickedness because why? Here on earth, in Esau's government, there is no order. It's only chaos. Give me that uh, Job 9.24. That's why the Lord says they know not, be and they won't understand that this place is in total darkness. We got weekdays that's according to Greek gods. <laughs> right? They named the planets Greek gods. This is all out of course. Okay, they one day we waking up, uh, this daylight savings. <laughs> they take an hour, give you an hour. That's that's all out of course. Okay, we got the whole world going to church on Sunday. That is out of course. That's not how the Lord ordained it to be from the beginning. Read what you got. The Book of Job, chapter nine and verse twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Uh -huh. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Uh -huh. If not, where and who is he? Read that again for me. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. This wicked is going into Edom, Esau, Idumia. Go ahead. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. Now, the Bible says that he covered the faces of the judges. Go ahead. If not, if not, where, where, and who is he? And who is covering the faces of the judges? Okay, because <laughs> there's a there's a lot of uh, confusion on the world about who is this wicked right here. Okay, but we're gonna get some clear cut evidence today. Now, the Bible says that they covered he covered the faces of the judges thereof. Now. When when we talk about them covering the faces of the judges, the Bible says that we are the guys, we the judges of the earth, and they cover our faces with what? Hey, give me the uh, 
The first pick. I'm going to show you something here. Nope. Yep, that one right there. All right. So, this is our forefather, right? Moses. Okay, you get this picture out the book, the icons. So, this is Moses, all right? Our forefather, dark. Okay, very dark. <laughs> all right? Now, remember the Bible says they covered the faces of the judges. Go to the next one. Now, in the movie The Ten Commandments, they got this devil right here, uh, Charleston Hester, playing Moses. Okay? This is how they covered the faces of the judges. They put these Edomites in place of the real Israelites, and they made movies out of it. All right? I was looking up the, uh, they made like 120 some million off this movie. Okay, they say it's, a, and that was back then. So they said in today's time, that'll be like the equivalent of like 1.6 billion. <laughs> so this is how they covered the faces of the judges right here. Okay. Now, give me the next one. All right, this is uh, Samson right here. Okay, this is Samson, right? Dark skin. Fighting uh, tigers and all that, right? <laughs> so watch the next picture. Now look at him. What do we got here? An Edomite. <laughs> they covered the faces of the judges. Okay? This is what you see now. And guess what? This is what people idolize. They, they look at these pictures and say, hey, Hey, God got to be white. Look at all the characters in the movies. They white, right? Every character in the Bible is white in the movies. So, of course, they got to be the guys on the earth, right? All right. Give me the next one. Who do we have here? Haggai. That's Haggai, okay? He even got the... Uh, <laughs> He even got the beard braided, just like brothers do today. See the beard braided in the middle? That's Haggai. That's our forefather right there. Mighty man. All right? Now, <laughs> let's, let's, let's look, take a look at the, the next picture of Haggai. There go Haggai today. The word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai. To Zerubbabel and to Joshua. Hey, they got him looking like the OxyClean man. <laughs> you see this? This is how they covereth the faces of the judges. And guess what? They covered the faces of the judges with what? With sin. With sin. Now, I'm going to show you what I mean. Give me, uh, you can drop that. Give me Second Th uh, Thessalonians two. Second Thessalonians two, and I want verse three, three and four. The book of Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Watch this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there co come a falling away first, mm -hmm. and that man of sin be revealed. And who? That man of sin be revealed, uh -huh. the son of perdition. You see that? That man of sin be revealed. That's the man of sin right there. All those uh, false pictures of our forefathers. That's why I told you they cover our faces with sin. Who is the man of sin? Esau. He is the man of sin. He, they covered the faces of the judges with what? With sin. Transgression. That's all Esau is about. Read on. 
who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God uh-huh. or that is worship so that he as God he as God go ahead sitteth in the temple of God he sitteth in the temple of God go ahead showing himself that he is God he shows the whole world that he's God so that's why they had to change the faces of the judges so the world can worship them they did not want the world to that the the secret to get out that God's chosen people are black. Okay, God's chosen people in that Bible that you read about that everybody's trying to figure out across the globe. <laughs> those are black people. They never want that secret to get out. You got some officer? Yes, sir. Hey, can I get um real quick the definition of iconoclasm? It did First uh, Maccabees three and forty eight. Going into what you're bringing out about how they paint their images, their likenesses, and things like that, because this is the power of imagery. The other, well, particularly Esau understands what the power of imagery do to a people. When you start to see yourself as a prince and a princess that has power with God. You start to walk with a sense of pride in a righteous way. You start to exhort your brothers and sisters. You start to see the spirit of Christ in them. But if you see something on the contrary, you start to look at yourself from a negative reflection. This is the reason why we see people change their complexion. Um, you got that pulled up? All praise. Um, read number two. The definition of iconoclasm. The rejection or destruction of religious images as heretical, her, heretic, heretical, 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 the doctrine of iconoclasm. So it says the destruction of religious images. What the captain has been showing you is the destruction of the true religious images of the prophets being black, the angels being black, the Israelites being black, right? Now, from there, let's get 1 Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. The book of 1 Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. Uh -huh. And lay open the book of the law. They did what? Laid open the book of the law. So we know that the Bible is the book of the law, read. Wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. They sought to do what? Paint the likeness of their images. They sought to paint the likeness of their images. Why? Because the other nations understand the power of imagery. When you start to paint the pictures of God's people being white in Esau, then we start to look at ourselves from a form of self-hatred. So this is something that they did in the time of the Grecians and very much so they did in the time of the Romans and what they're doing now through movies. And that's a heavy point, officer, because when people start to see Esau's army, they, they immediately want to be a part of that. That's why you got so many of our people sign up for the army and, you know, the Navy and all of that, right? But when we tell our people they're the Israelites – and you need to join God's army, this is the army you're supposed to be a part of, they've already envied the oppressor for how many years? They've already looked at Esau as the gods on the earth. So now they're looking at us like, what army? I already, I've been to the real army. They think <laughs> Esau's army is the real army. So now they're like, I want no part of what that is. They ain't got nothing to do with the white man. Hey, so Cap, so uh, if it don't come with a Dodge Charger, then, then, then I don't want that army. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. So this is why us as Israelites, us men, we got to be a part of God's army, this government right here on earth. Okay? Now, uh, read uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 3 again. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. Uh -huh. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Right, come on. And that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin, right, who we just seen on those pictures. That's the man of sin be revealed. Go ahead. The son of perdition. The son of perdition, meaning hell or destruction. Okay, jump down to verse 6. 
Verse 6, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. He was being revealed in his time. Okay, this is his time to be revealed in these last days. Okay, now, this is what we got to understand when it comes to what the officer, officer Micaiah brought out here and with the definition of iconoclasm. When, when Esau takes our pictures of our forefathers and changes them to, their, to themselves, that is an act of war. Okay, I want y'all to understand that. If just say, just think of yourself. If somebody came and took all your pictures and changed them into yourself, took your lifestyle and your your heritage and everything that came with you, how would you feel about that? You'll be running to the police, to the government. You'll be going crazy. But our people are just at ease. They're like, hey, okay, well, you know. They changed the picture, so what? No, that that's an act of war. You know why? Because they changing these pictures for our, our whole nation to worship them, our kids to worship them. So that's when you see when our people get gunned down by Esau, what's the, what's the first thing they say? I forgive them. Go, go in there and gun down seven, eight black people in the church. First thing the black lady said was what? I forgive them. You know why? Because she seen them him as God. That's Jesus' son. So that's a that's an act of war right there. When they change our pictures into them, our pictures. That's a part of your uh. What's the word I want to use? The, your identity, your your uh photo book. Okay, you can, you change my photo book. Hey, we got to go to war. <laughs> Okay, you come in and change all my pictures to Edomite pictures. You take all mine and switch them off for Edomites. No, that's an act of war. Okay? <laughs> From there, give me uh now let's see how the most high look. Since they changing, you understand, the pictures and all that. We gotta these are things we gotta drill in our kids' head. So they don't be going to uh church and, you know, school and looking at these these Edomites is, is God's on the earth. Daniel uh, 7 and 9. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 9. Uh-huh. And I be I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Uh-huh. And the ancient of days did sit. The ancient of days is the most high God. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. He got a garment that's white as snow. Come on. And his hair, uh, the hair and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Like the what? Like the pure wool. The pure wool. Okay. You'll never see. Hey, how many sisters we see cutting their hair off and, you know, dyeing it? All these different colors got crazy weave in it, right? They don't understand that the Lord, the first author of beauty, gave them the best hair on the planet. Esau hair is actually dead. <laughs> okay, we got live. Uh, our hair is alive like trees and, and grass. Okay, our hair grows upright. Their hair grow straight down. So the Lord says... That he has a, a white garment and his head is like what? Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Finish it out. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. So we know the, we understand the most high got the woolly head. Now let's get a more clear description of the most high. Give me uh, Ezekiel 1. And I want 26 and 27. So if y'all didn't know, here's another description of the Most High in the Bible. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1 and verse 26. Come on. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Uh -huh. It's the likeness of a throne. Come on. As the appearance of the sapphire stone. Right. And upon the likeness of the throne was likeness as the appearance of a man. Of a who? A man. A who? A man. Come on. Above, above upon it. So this man is sitting on this throne that looked like sapphire, right? 
Come on. And I saw as the color of amber. You saw the color of what? Of amber. Of amber. Go ahead. As the appearance of fire around about within it. Uh Uh-huh. From the appearance of his loins, even upward. It was the appearance of his what? Of his loins. His loins. Even upward. Even upward from his loins. Go ahead. And from the appearance of his loins, even downward. Even downward. Go ahead. I saw as it were the appearance of fire. Uh Uh-huh. And it had brightness round about. All right. Now, Officer Mordecai, give me the definition of amber gemstone. Type it in just like that. Amber gemstone. All right, it said the color of this man was like the color of amber. All right, so let's look at a, some amber gemstones here. Pull that up for me. We got to paint these pictures and, and put them back into the minds of the people. Go to images. That's images. Okay, so as you can see, keep scrolling. Uh, did you did you blow it up? Take it down just a little bit so we can see a few more images. All right. So now there goes some some uh, amber for you right there. Okay, brown skin. It's a dark brown. That one right there on the uh, first on the left. Okay. So amber. All right, the color of amber, as you can see, is brown. It's like a golden brown, right? So this is the color of the Most High in the Bible. All right, sitting on the throne. That, this this throne, that's the color of sapphire, all right? So now we understand, okay, the Most High is a black man, and his government is being set on earth. Through who? The Israelites, his voice is to the son of man. Okay. From there, give me uh, Isaiah 60. You can drop that. Give me verse 2. This is why the Lord has his government being set here on earth in these last days. The book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So sin, darkness goes into sin. Okay, so sin shall cover the earth. Okay, hey, give me that precept real quick in uh, Proverbs. Uh, Let me see. What's that? Proverbs. Uh, What's that? Where is that at? Uh, hold on one second. Give me Proverbs 4. That's what I want. Proverbs 4 and 19. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 19. Watch this. The way of the wicked is as darkness. Read it again. The way of the wicked is as darkness. Uh huh. They know not at what they stumble. Right. So that it, when it, when the Bible talks about darkness, is going to wickedness, which is sin. Okay. Go back to Isaiah sixty and two again. The book of Isaiah chapter sixty and verse two. Uh huh. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Right. Wickedness, sin has covered this earth. Come on. And gross darkness, the people. And total gross means total. Darkness, the people. So the darkness has sin has covered the earth, and total sin, <laughs> darkness, the people. Okay? So this is why the Lord's government is being set on earth right now, because if Esau government continues to reign here, our people are going to die in sin. Every last one of the Israelites. The Lord has to set his army here, his government here on earth, to combat the gross darkness that our people are in. Read it out. Finish that out. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. Right. The Lord shall arise upon thee. Go ahead. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. Hey, give me Job chapter 10. 
Job 10 and 21. The book of Job, chapter 10 and verse 31. 21. Verse 21. Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. You see that? The land of darkness and the shadow of death. Read. A land of darkness. What is it? A land of darkness. A land of darkness. Go ahead. As darkness itself. Watch this. And of the shadow of death. Without any order. Without what? Without any order. What is America? Without any order. Uh Uh-huh. And where the light is as darkness. And where the light is as darkness. You see that? So when the Bible is telling us that this whole earth is out of course, what? It's filled with sin, darkness. And where there is darkness, guess what? (laughs) There's sin and there's chaos and disorder. There is no order. So there's chaos here. So the Lord's government on earth has to be established. Okay, read that again, verse 22. That's heavy. Book of uh, Job, chapter 10 and verse 22. A land of darkness, as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death, Uh without any order. Without any order here in America. Go ahead. And where the light is as darkness. Right, so that's why our kids are out of order. Okay, That's, that's a spirit in America. Your kids just grow up just being out of order, wicked as hell. You be like, what is wrong with you? You be wondering why your kids do certain things. That's a spirit here in Babylon for them to just do outrageous wickedness. Okay? That is a spirit here in Babylon. Your kids, like, just porno popping up everywhere. Okay? That's the way... Uh, uh, Esau got it here in America with this witchcraft we we call the internet and cell phones and laptops. Okay, that's that's how he got it set up here. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Okay, from there, give me uh First John five and nineteen. It's the book of First John, chapter 5 and verse 19. And we know that we are of God, mm-hmm. and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world what? Lieth in wickedness. You see that? The whole world lieth in wickedness, in sin, in darkness. That goes back to what we read in Isaiah and Job. Okay? This whole world is filled with wickedness, with darkness. Okay? The only thing good in this world is... Is this truth? That's it. That's it. Nothing else is good. Okay? The laws of God. That's the only thing that's good in this world. God's feast days. Okay? That's the only thing that's good for our people. Everything else is wickedness, is sin, is going to lead you to idleness, which we know that idleness is. Hey, when you're in idleness, you some evil. Your mind is not focused on your salvation. And that's just the way Esau got it. So, hey, officers, when, when, when you see brothers and sisters lead this truth, guess what they go back into? Darkness. You go back into darkness, which is what? Disorder and chaos. That's what's waiting for you out there. Okay, so brothers and sisters, this is like (laughs) the worst time possible to even think about trying to lead this truth because of your feelings, your emotions, some correction, you want some sex, you ain't getting enough money, right? Your kids ain't, you know, they don't want to be in the truth. It's one of those that a lot of brothers and sisters bug out to lead the truth and they, they go right back into darkness, right back to that vomit that they used to live in. Okay? Now, from there, give me Titus 1. <clears throat> so this is why the Lord got to set up this government here on earth. Watch what the Bible says. Titus 1 and 5. The book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 5. For this cause, left I thee in Crete. Uh, 
this. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou should have set in order to Do th- what? That thou should have set in order. Set th- in order. Go ahead. The things that are wanting. The things that are lacking. Okay. So this is what uh, Paul was telling Titus. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set you. I'm gonna put you over here in Crete. I want you to set in order. Right. The things that are lacking. That's what God governments does. Okay. Hey. Hey, finish that out. And ordain elders in every city. And ordain who? Elders in every city. That's leaders. That goes to, to your bishops. That goes into your deacons. That goes into your captains. That goes to your officers, your soldiers. That's what the Bible means when it says ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Okay? that That's order. Hey, officer, pull up that video that I sent you, the first one. Pull that up real quick. I forgot to uh, add that. But play that for me. Got it. Oh, okay. Quick video. We didn't even watch all of it. So we're going to look at this video about the functions of government. Okay, go ahead. In a democratic society, people choose to live under a government because they believe the functions of government will improve their lives. Consenting to live under a government means giving up some degree of freedom but citizens' lives are improved by what government offers them. Abraham Lincoln said it in a much fancier way. The legitimate object of government is to do for a community of people whatever they need to have done, but cannot do it all, or cannot so well do for themselves in their separate and individual capacities. With that in mind, let's examine four main functions of government. First, government keeps order. Okay, this means pause passing it. laws to keep people safe, Right. Keep order. Okay. That's the first thing we read about is doing what? Getting your household in order. This is the four functions of government. The first one is to keep order. Okay. Go ahead. Having a police force to deter and investigate crimes and managing courts to administer justice. Second, government manages foreign relations. This means making international agreements, handling diplomatic situations to reduce conflicts with other countries, and having a military force to provide security. Third, government provides services. This includes schools, libraries, fire departments, parks, roads, bridges, garbage collection, recycling programs, water and sewage systems, food inspections, building inspections, mail service, and many others. In addition, government serves people in need with programs like Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, housing assistance, and food stamps. Fourth, government creates public policies to avoid or manage problems. Examples of this function include environmental laws to protect resources and reduce pollution, economic policies to prevent a recession, and zoning regulations to prevent a factory from moving into a housing neighborhood. Essentially, government creates a direction for society to deal with the reality that there are many issues in which the actions of an individual can cause massive problems that are too large for others to overcome. For example, Carla and all of her neighbors can be as environmentally responsible as possible to maintain clean okay, care that's for it. their kids. That's but it. So, we're going to talk... A, a bit more about uh, that managing the foreign relations, but when it comes to the four uh, functions of a government, we're talking about keeping order, right? Managing, uh, what does it say? Managing foreign relations. Uh, help me out. Um, providing services. And we know that last one is for us is going into God's laws. Okay, so 
Where are we at here? Uh, Titus 1 and 5, we left off there. Give me Second Peter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, give me verse 9 and 10. The book of Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations mm-hmm. and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. Uh-huh. But chiefly after the flesh and the lust of cleanness. Book of Second Peter, chapter two and verse ten. Uh huh. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Watch this. And despise government. And despise what? And despise government. You see that? So when brothers and sisters come into this truth, they can't take correction. They in the lust of the flesh, right? They burning. They can't take, you know, correction is is one of the things I named previously of why they start to despise government, which goes into leadership, okay? So when they despise government, they despise the leadership, which what? The most high set up here, okay? Read that again. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they uh-huh. self-willed they, they self will go ahead they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity right they are not afraid to speak evil of leadership of government okay so the lord telling us here that those that don't want to be a part of god's government okay they're gonna walk in the lust of the flesh that's what that is no way to uh to explain it give me First Corinthians six and two. Okay. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter six and verse two. Uh huh. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? You see that? We the judges. The saints are the judges of the world. If the world shall be judged by you, you see that? This is us in the kingdom. So right now, the Lord says, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? That's why the Lord sets up his government here. Okay? That's why the Lord, that's why he told him, hey, Titus, hey, set up uh, elders, ordain elders in every city, and make sure you pay attention to what's lacking. Okay? So guess what? We are to judge the smallest matters, right? Because we're going to be the judges on earth in the kingdom, judging the whole entire planet. So right now, what are we doing? This practice. <laughs> this is this is rehearsal time for us as being judges. Give me uh, 2 Chronicles 19. Second Chronicles 19 and 6. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 6. Uh-huh. And said to the judges, take heed what ye do. Take heed what you do, the Lord says. For ye judge not for men, uh-huh. but for the Lord. Who do we judge for? But for the Lord. But for the Lord. Come on. Who is with you in the judgment. The Lord says what? Who is with you in the judgment. You see that? So we are set up by the Lord in this government to be judges, right? And the Lord says, you don't judge for man, you judge for the Lord. Who is with us in the judgment? So when brothers or sisters be thinking, we sitting up here making carnal moves, we sitting up here judging the people according to our feelings and our emotions, no. We judging for the Lord because we do what the Bible say. We bring out what the law say. A lot of people don't have a, a damn foot, a leg to stand on when it comes to this Bible officers. <laughs> okay? We all, when it boils down, is feelings and emotions that they can't get over. Hey, can I pull something real quick? Hey, let's go back to Titus 1 and 5 real quick. Because this is going into the Lord being with us, right? And it's just something that I just want to pull out of there. Because with us establishing government, 
we understand Babylon the Great, this system not for us. It was never built upon us. So we have to invest in a system of government under God's law, statutes, and commandments, right? So with us being the children of Israel, that got to spread across the entire earth. Now let's get that real quick. Book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 5. Uh huh. For this cause, left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. The things that are wanting. And ordain elders in every city. It said, and ordain elders in every city. Captain just brought it out. Elders mean leaders in every city. So you know what that means? In every city that you could think of across the entire planet, our footprint has to be there so this earth can be governed by God's laws. Why? Because as you said, Captain, this is dress rehearsal. Real quick, one last precept. Matthew 28, 19. Don't lose the thought about 2 Chronicles chapter 19 and 6 neither. It's the book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Uh Uh-huh. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why do we got to go and teach all nations? Our people is scattered in all nations. We're across the four corners of the earth. Why? Because of slavery. The preset to this is Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. But read on. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things Uh whatsoever I have commanded you. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, we know Christ is talking to the apostles here. So whatsoever Christ commanded them to speak, that's what they speak. Very much so in today's time. We speak what the Bible tells us to speak, govern under God's law, statutes, and commandments. Now read that part uh, after, and lo. And lo, I am with you always. I am with you always. I am with you always. That's going back into Second Chronicles chapter 19 and verse 6. Christ is setting up the government and the leadership in today's time now. So when we see people go against the government, they're going against Christ. Hey, officer, that's heavy right there, man. Hey, let's get Matthew 6 and 9 real quick. Going right off of what the uh, cat brought out in the second uh, Chronicles, right? So this is all rehearsing the righteous acts, right? Everything that we do now is all preparation for preparation for kingdom dealings, kingdom activity, right? Matthew 6 and 9. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 9. Come on. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh-huh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will will be done. Here on earth we are to do the will of God, correct? Read again. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. So what we do now on earth is supposed to be a replica of what to expect come the kingdom, right? Matthew 18 and 18. Matthew 18 and 18. Watch this. Remember, what we do here on earth is a resemblance of what has already been taking place in the heavens. This is all just practice, like the captain brought out. Pay attention. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 18. Come on. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. As it is on earth. In heaven, on earth. Read again. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So what execute judgment you put forth because Christ is in the judgment, that is already being stamped approved in the heavens. So when you try, you know, go against God's government, that don't just die on earth. Like that deed, that action of your rebellion doesn't just live and die here on earth. Read it one more time. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Uh Uh-huh. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So understand, everything that we do here in the the, uh, physical has spiritual repercussions. Everything that we do in the spiritual, right here, right now in the carnal, it has spiritual repercussions. Because everything that's taking place now is being recorded anyway. 
and spiritually it will be charged against you. So the same government you despise now, don't think when the when the kingdom come here that what you've done here on earth despising government and to the hell with the leadership, that that's just null and void now because now we're dealing with two different realms. No, the same way you was moving on earth, the way you didn't care about leadership, the way you despised, you didn't believe Christ was in judgment, all that's going to be held against you when the Lord's kingdom come from heaven onto the earth. Okay? Go ahead, Cap. And that's the heavy point, officer. That's why a lot of people, you know, they come in with these preconceived notions like, you know, they know it all or, you know, you don't know more than me or you're younger than me or whatever the case may be and not looking at things spiritually about how the Lord is dealing with men when it comes to Christ's kingdom being set up here on earth. You got to come in here, put away the carnality thinking, and you got to put on your spiritual lenses and look at how the Lord is setting up men. Look at how the Lord is dealing with men that didn't have a damn clue of what this Bible said and now able to produce, you know, classes and things like that to edify the nation. Okay, you got to look at this thing spiritually. Give me uh, 1 Maccabees 8. Start of verse 1. It's the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 8 and verse 1. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. So we're talking about the Romans now. Go ahead. That they were mighty and valiant men, and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a league of amity. Am- amity meaning friendship. Go ahead. With all that came unto them. You see that? Ain't that America today? <laughs> Same thing with Rome. Okay, go ahead. And that they were men of great valor. It, w- it was told him also of their wars and noble acts which they had done among the gen- Galatians. Galatians and how they had conquered them. They conquered them. And brought them under tribute. And put them under tribute, made them pay taxes. Go ahead. And what they had done in the country of Spain mm-hmm. for the winning of the mines of the silver and gold which is there, and that by their policy and patience they had conquered all the place. You see that? policy right <laughs> we just uh we just read that watch that in the video about governments have to set up policy so read that again and that by their policy and patience they had conquered all the place uh-huh. though it were very far from them hey that's america though america is very far from the eastern uh part of the world they set up what Army bases everywhere, embassies everywhere, embargoes everywhere, right? It's, read that apart again. Though it what? Though it were very far from them, uh-huh. and the kings also that came against them from the utter, uttermost part of the earth uh-huh. till they had discomforted, discomforted them uh-huh. and given them a great overthrow. A great overthrow. Go ahead. So that the rest did give them tribute every year. Every year. That's America right there for you. Okay. America is an extension of Rome. We just read exactly how America deals with which Rome did. All right. Jump down to verse 11. Verse 11. It was told him besides how they destroyed and brought under their dominion all other kingdoms and isles that at any time resisted them. Read on. But with their friends and such as rely upon them, they kept enmity. They kept friendship. And that they had conquered kingdoms both far and nigh. You see that? Hey, see, this is how America is when it comes to the, the witchcraft. It says that they, it says, but with their friendship and such as relied upon them, they kept amity, right? Friendship with the people that they conquered. So when you when you conquer a people, this is how America is. They don't make you feel like you're a slave. They make you, they, oh, now you're like a, uh, you're a servitude now. You're an indentured servant, meaning you paying for America to, to keep dealing with you. That's how it is here. Same thing with Rome. Go ahead. 
in so much as all that heard of their name were afraid of them. Right. That's how America is. <laughs> when you start talking about America, all the other nations are afraid. How many nations have ever bombed America? Since America has been a nation. How many times have you seen America actually get hit by missiles? Never. Same thing with Rome. Go ahead. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom, mm -hmm. those reign, uh -huh. and whom again they would, they displace. They displace. Go ahead. Finally, that they were greatly exalted. Uh -huh. Yet for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. Watch this. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house. They made for themselves a senate house. Okay. This is where it comes from, right here, from Rome. This is where America gets it from. Read that again. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein 320 men sat in council daily, mm. consulting always for the people, to the end they might be well ordered. That's America today. Read on. And that they committed their government to one man every year. They committed their government to what? To one man every year. Back then it was one with Rome. Today is how many? Four. Every four years. This is the president right here. Go ahead. Who ruled over all their country and that all were obedient to that all one. All obedient to that one. Go ahead. And that there was neither envy nor emulation among them. You see that? That's America, the same way they <laughs> their role was set up. It's the exact same way when it comes to government, okay? Now, give me uh, second address 11. I want uh, 40 through 42. So this is how when America set up there. Uh, now, we, remember, we, just, we was just reading about Rome there, about how they set up. Their government and had the whole world afraid of them. Okay, now watch this about America. The this of, going, which is we about to read about Rome again, but Rome is an extension. I mean, America is an extension of Rome. Okay, read what you got. The Book of Second Edges, chapter eleven and verse forty. Uh huh. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past Rome. And had power over the world with great fear, uh, fearfulness, uh -huh. and over the whole compass of the earth, mm -hmm. with much wicked oppression. With what? With much wicked oppression. With much wicked oppression. Go ahead. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. With deceit. This is America to the T. Okay? The same thing we just read about in Maccabees. This is how they deal. They got the same spirit. Remember, this goes back into the earth. It's given to the hand of the wicked. So what do they do? They oppress the people with much wicked oppression. Go ahead. For the earth has thou not judged with truth. Right. They don't judge the earth with truth. It's all about lies, even though they make people put their hand on the Bible. <laughs> they make you put your hand on the Bible in court, but they telling lies to lock up black men. Right? Come on. For thou hast afflicted the meek. Mm. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. Uh -huh. Thou hast loved liars. They love liars. And destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. Mm. And have cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. No harm. Okay. they that, That's going to our northern kingdom, brothers and sisters. Okay. But this here applies to the whole nation of Israel. They have afflicted the meek. Right? The peaceable was that's us this is when their government is established okay they oppress us to the max now let's talk about the lord's government all right christ's government give me isaiah 9 and 6 it's the book of isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 for unto you, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the government, right, is going to be upon his shoulder, read. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, 
the Prince of Peace. Read. Uh, of the increase of his government. Of the increase of his government, read. And peace. And what? And peace. Uh-huh. There shall be no end. Stop. Do y'all see what's coming with Christ's government? Three things that 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 you put together right there, what we just read. Christ, right? His government and peace. It's gonna be peace on the whole planet Earth when Christ's government is set up. Okay? Because right now, what what we read about this this uh this the way that this government is set up now is full of what? Darkness is full of sin. Why? Because the man of sin is ruling things. This is his government right now. But now with Christ's government is being set up, it says, verse 7 again, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end Uh upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. To what? To order it. To order it. Go ahead. And to establish it with judgment and with justice. And with justice. That's what uh, Esau does not. Remember, he just said they love liars. Okay? They, They oppress the people with much wicked oppression. So when Christ's kingdom is set up, it says, He's going to establish it with judgment and with justice. Go ahead. From henceforth, even forever, Uh the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Give me uh, Isaiah 32. Isaiah 32 and 1. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 32 and verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness. In righteousness, go ahead. And princes shall rule in judgment. You see that? Prince is going to rule in judgment. Go ahead. And a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. Meaning what? We are going to be all of Israel's protection in that day. No more of us having to hide from the wicked. No more of us being oppressed by the wicked. In that day, it says a man shall be as in hiding place from the wind. That's our. That's gonna be the protection. We, the man is gonna be the protection in that day. Read on. And a covert from the tempest, uh-huh. as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Okay, from there, give me uh, Isaiah forty-two. So the Lord says, it's gonna be the Bible says it's gonna be a king, meaning Christ, that shall reign in righteousness. And princes shall rule in judgment. Why is that? Read this. 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 21. Watch this. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Uh Uh-huh. He will... He will magnify the law. What is Christ going to do? He will magnify the law Uh and make it honorable. Make it honorable. That that means everybody on earth is going to have to keep these laws. He's going to magnify it and make it honorable. Okay? From there, give me uh, Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11 and 1. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 11 and verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Talking about Christ. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. That's that's where we get our wisdom and understanding through, the spirit of Christ. Go ahead. The spirit of counsel. The spirit of counsel is where we get our understanding of how to counsel biblically. Go ahead. And might. And might, go ahead. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You see that? That all comes from Christ. That's 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 the spirit that us men have today. That's why you see us men standing up. We got what? A lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding, wisdom we use, right? The fear of the Lord, the power in his might. All that comes from Christ's government now being set up on earth. Okay? From there, give me, uh, let's go back to Isaiah 32. I want verse 16 and 17. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 32 and verse 16. Uh Uh-huh. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, Uh and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. 
and the work of righteousness shall be peace. You see that? That that work of righteousness shall be peace. Peace on earth. Go ahead. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. You see that? It says the effect of righteousness, quietness, <laughs> and assurance forever. That's what we want. Quietness. Okay? Hey, that's why people be moving out to, like, the damn forest and all that. They tired of here. Hey, when we was when we was at the Feast of Tabs, hey, it was so quiet out there. It's peaceful. You ain't gotta hear gunshots and and highways and cars screeching and you don't hear none of that. It's just quiet. All you just hear is birds chirping and it, it, I, that that scenery is is lovely. It's like a peace of mind, right? That's how it's gonna be when Christ uh government is established here in heaven. Give me that in Isaiah 14. We we got we going back to that. All praises for that thing. Give me verse uh 4. Start there. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The golden city is America. It ceased now. Go ahead. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the tr- of the rulers. He said, the Lord hath done this. He hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter. The king that holds the scepter, he destroyed the rulers of his place. Read on. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. That's Esau, what we read in uh, 2nd Edges uh, 11, right? About oppressing the people, he smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. Go ahead. He that ruled the nations in anger uh-huh. and persecuted and none hindereth. None hindereth. Go ahead. The whole earth is at rest. Hey, this is what we're looking for right here, Israel. The whole earth is at rest, meaning peace. Go ahead. And is quiet. Is what? And is quiet. Is quiet. Okay, you ain't got to worry about Becky. Uh, and, and, and uh, what what they call him? Uh, Karen running up to you, okay? Trying to get you killed by the police, okay? <laughs> Read that again, verse seven. The whole earth is at rest, uh huh, and is quiet. It's quiet. Go ahead. They break forth into singing, uh huh. Yay! The fir trees rejoice at thee. And the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against you us. You see that? Even the trees going to be happy as hell that them Edomites is <laughs> just destroyed. No more cutting down trees. Okay? The trees is happy. <laughs> but our people, some of our people ain't going to be happy. All right? Give me uh, Isaiah 1. Isaiah 1. And 26, watch this, future prophecy here. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 26. Start at 25. Verse 25, I will turn my hand upon thee and and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy sin. I'm uh, going into sin, go ahead. And I will restore thy judges as at the first. You see, the Lord says I'm going to restore thy judges as at the first, meaning what? When, he, when the Lord dealt with Moses, we going right back to that, okay? Captains of 50 and captains of 100 and officers and all that. We, he going to restore the judges as at the first. Go ahead. And thy counselors as at the beginning. Uh, at the counselors as the beginning, read. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, mm. the faithful city. In that day. Okay, a few more precepts. Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and 12. Let's start there. I want 12 through 14. We're talking about God's government on earth and in heaven. We're dealing with the heaven part because we've already established the Lord's government here on earth. Okay? His voice is to the sons of man. You see, son, you see the men standing up. All right? So now let's deal with the... Last part, in heaven. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates. 
and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Uh huh. On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. Watch this. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. 12 foundations on the wall of the city. Go ahead. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. You see that? In the, it says, <laughs> in the wall of the city, 12 foundations, and in them, the names of the 12 apostles. Okay? So what is that telling you? The 12 apostles are back on earth today. And let's get that real quick in Matthew. And they're going to have rulership in the kingdom. They're going to be so, they so important to the Lord that they names is in the foundation of the kingdom. That's how heavy the 12 is. And they back today doing work. They are back today. Uh, Matthew 19 and 28. So you got, you're going to have the most high. You got Christ. And then you got the 12. And then you got the 144K. So it's in heaven. Okay. Read this. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 28. Uh-huh. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of in Man. The, wait, wait. Read that again. Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. And the re generation the regeneration go ahead when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory you see that he said, he said hey when i sit on, the, on on my throne and my glory in the kingdom go ahead ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones mm. judging the 12 tribes of israel you see that that's order that's order <laughs> why do our people get bugged out when they hear about order when they hear about camps that got rank, right? They every everywhere else they understand got rank. Hell, the damn MPS got rank. <laughs> Don't they got principals and superintendents and guidance counselors and all that? They understand MPS, but when it comes to the Bible, they dumbfounded. Oh, y'all wicked, y'all making y'all. Hold on, this is this is biblical. We going the Lord. We he just read. It. We just he said I'm gonna establish it as at the first. Okay, so when you hear brothers and sisters bugging out about bishops and deacons and captains and all that, they ain't got the spirit of Christ on them, because Christ telling us here, this is this is rank being set up in the kingdom. Okay, now last scripture. Judges 5 and 11 is what we're doing it for. This is what we're doing it for. God's government on earth and in heaven. So if you ain't, hey, if you ain't trying to be a part of the Lord's government right now, that's telling the Lord you ain't ready for the kingdom then. Because you think it's going to be just chaotic and you're going to just be running around doing whatever the hell you want to do? No, you not. <laughs> no, you not. Ain't no that Negro mindset is gonna be gone. You ain't that kind of mind even making it to the kingdom. The Lord gonna make an example out of you in the wilderness, in front of the whole nation. Read what you got. The book of Judges, chapter five and verse eleven. They that are delivered from the noise of archers and the places of the drawing water. Now, this is heavy because it says they, they, they that are delivered. <laughs> okay? So that's telling you what? All oh, Israel ain't finna be delivered. A lot of people think they finna make it in and they not. They that are delivered from the noise of archers, meaning those missiles, right? And the places of drawing water, that's slavery. All where we scattered at. Okay, go ahead. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. You see that? There, they shall rehearse being a part of God's government. That's that's what it means when it says rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Because what does the Bible calls us in uh, Ezekiel 37 and 10? An exceeding great army. Okay, he calls, hey, he, when he brought us out of Egypt, he said, hey, hey, get that real quick. 
Because people be forgetting that the Lord deals with camps. Get that in Exodus 12. And uh, where is that at? Let me let me get let me get, uh, where is that? Is it? Uh, where is it? Where is that? Fifty one. Yeah. Exodus twelve fifty one. The book of Exodus chapter twelve and verse fifty one. And it came to pass the self same day uh-huh. that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. By what? By their armies. By their armies. <laughs> by their armies. Okay? So that's what the Lord deals with. He don't deal with individualites. You think you can, the Ruach is dealing with you? No. <laughs> the Lord ain't dealing with no Ruachs. <laughs> Hey, the Lord deals with armies, camps, okay? So read Judges 5, 11 again. The book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers and the places of drawing water. Uh, the places of drawing water, go ahead. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, okay? So, brothers and sisters, you got to be a part of, of God, if you want to be a part of God's government, you got to be a part of a camp to to be what get used to order, structure, discipline, accountability. Because when you go to the wilderness, what you think gonna be waiting there for you? You think you're gonna be running around in the wilderness <laughs> doing what you want to do with 144k in crisis in charge? No, you got to get used to that now. Okay, so the Lord is telling us. We got to rehearse these righteous acts now because God's government on earth is going to be the same way in heaven. All right. So with that, I'm going to say shalom.